Continuing this series, going beyond Chapter 3 of Tree Bar Development into the part of Tree Bar where you make Tree Bar yours because Tree Bar is not a perfect or finished software, but it's a working model. If you want the code, you can make a donation. Otherwise, you can, you know, just copy it off of the screen and make the changes yourself because the code is still free up through Chapter 3 of Tree Bar Development. It's on the website. The change we need to make now is to some new code that was apparently not tested well enough or it worked and then something was changed or whatever. Let's just look at the GUI first. In the Places tab, everything works here except we got a little problem with, I believe, this one. Now we're going to pick a place to edit and we're going to try and figure out what's going on, what needs to be changed. So what about finding us some places first to play with? Miami's a good place. Let's play with Miami. In the tour video, we made a place called Mammy, and we wanted to change it to Miami. This is not Miami, Florida. Miami, Oklahoma. I want to edit it. So we go Mammy, and this does not autofill, and there are no commas allowed. It's just one place. You don't say Oklahoma, you don't say USA, you just say the one place you want. We might have been allowed to make two names for place ID number two that were identical. It's possible that this was done at a time when the code was not finished and that I just never went back and deleted it from the database. I think what I should do is delete the extra mammy from the database and then carry on with something that I know for a fact is wrong. First off, let's find out if it's being referenced anywhere. One twenty five is referenced, so let's delete one twenty seven. Let's restart this. Make sure we're working with current stuff. All right, now there's one Mammy. There's two different functionalities here. You can add a name to Mammy. You can call it whatever you want. Or you can respell a name Mammy by clicking it, and then it turns into an input. So let's try just respelling it and see if it works. Yeah, Mammy is still there, and comma... O doesn't do anything, so Miami, Oklahoma is not there. So what we just did to edit Mammy did not work. So there is one place named Miami. And there is still a place, Mammy. So respell name doesn't work. Just like this, I'll do it again and it still doesn't work. Miami's still there. Miami, Oklahoma is not there, but Miami, Oklahoma is. Let's stick with this dialogue right here. Add a name to this place, Miami. Click OK. These are two separate functionalities, and it's not really clear that they're two separate functionalities. So place ID 122 should end up with two badly spelled versions of Miami. Okay, mommy did go in, but it's not auto-filling. See if it auto-fills if you restart the program. Yes, it doesn't stay mommy, it changes to mammy, but that's all right because they're both place 122 and mammy is in main TBD. This is the main name for that place. 
This is additional functionalities. The reason these are all the same is not because of duplication. It's because there are three different things that you can choose to do. They didn't show up before because I told them not to in the code. So we can choose to respell Mammy. We can choose to respell Mommy, one or the other. We can delete one of these. Or we can make one of these the main name. How did we add Mommy? We did it right here. Well, let's do it again. This is a different bad spelling of Miami, Oklahoma. So, add name works. Let's try deleting this Mammy. The place name Mammy, but not place ID number 122, will be deleted on OK. All right. And it doesn't exist because it's not there. However, so delete works, add works. Got to get the capitalization right on this one. Let's check on main. Let's try making mommy become the display name for place ID number 22. We're going to go into the database and actually look it up. We supposedly just changed mommy to the main place name. There they both are. Let's find out which one is there. Mommy is the main place name for Mammy. 128. All right. This works. This works. This works. This doesn't work. So let's go print something when we try to respell a name. Respell. Let's just print something to find out if this is even running. To be perfectly honest, there's nothing here. This was never finished. The reason it doesn't work because I didn't write it. But let's do this anyway. Get the old spelling. Print it. And go from there. Alt-L goes to places. Edit Mammy. We're going to respell this name. First, let's delete this name. Place mommy, but not place ID 122 will be deleted on OK. Except there's an error. 264 places. One of these is a tuple, and it's not supposed to be. There. This is a tuple, and it's not supposed to be. It's only referenced once. Let's go like this. That should work right. We're trying to delete a place name. Delete mommy. Okay. That worked. Okay. Let's see if something prints. That printed already before I hit OK. Did you notice that didn't wait till I click OK? It ran on focus out or something. So let's see what that event is. Respell is bound to. That's not a button. Yeah, it's a button, but this is not a button. This is something else. That's a mouse button. This right here is a mouse button. LB is bound to label button text. So the button is not a tkinter button. It's a tkinter label that's being used as a button. This is a tkinter label that's being used as a button. Okay. So when you click that label, that original spelling is recorded, printed, and then that old spelling is input into the respell input, which is this entry. That's where we stopped. We didn't do anything else, right? Mm, I don't know. I wouldn't be so sure. Because we still have to look at the code for this OK button. So I should have actually printed something under whatever code is run by this OK button. So we're going to look for another respell input someplace. There's four of them here. Control F count. There's three more someplace else right there. In edit single place, which is that OK button. OK, edit single place has several 
nested functions inside of it. We're not going to be interested in delete. We're not going to be interested in main. We are interested in respell. We're not worried about show more. That's what showed those number three and number four functionalities. Don't know what get input is. Cancel edit is nothing important. OK edit one is what happens when you press that OK button. So that big nested function up there is what's going to sort through here and decide which of those things we're trying to do. So there's probably a switch in there. If this, if that, if this, if that. There it is. If self.respell input is true, or I should say if self.respell input is not none, new spelling equals self.respell input dot get dot strip and if there's a comma don't do anything so we want to print this new spelling is none unless you define it by getting string here alt l goes to places mammy old spelling mammy Put the I in there, press OK, new spelling is none. There is our problem. Why is new spelling none? One problem, and maybe the only problem, is that we're looking for something in respell input when we've just got done saying that respell input equals none. We have to look at where we're saying this. Self.respell input should not be set to none when you press the OK button. That's the wrong place to do that. You just stopped anything from happening. I do believe we need to copy this, comment it out, and move it into the init for this class. Let's see if that is any better. This was tested once, and I might have just made a quick change just at the end. You know how, like, you've been cleaning the, you know, the glass figuring museums all night and you haven't broken anything, and then you're finished and you're going home, but uh, on your way out the door, you pick up your feather duster one more time and smash three things accidentally because you're tired. I might have fixed some code like that on the way out the door after I tested it. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but usually when I tell myself to stop, if I keep going, I'll be sorry. All right, Mammy, let's see if it's respelled. By golly, that's all I had to do. One thing. Now we've got Miami, Oklahoma. Let's see if we still have Mammy. Nope. Let's say this occupation is in Miami, Florida. Well, that's obviously going to work. Let's say it's in Miami, Oklahoma. That feature is now fixed. The next teeny tiny little itsy bitsy problem that we want to fix is transfer of a new name to the add person dialog. So let's go ahead and input a new name. Tab over to add new person, hit the space bar, and you'll see that in this case, because I just fixed it, Jill Morris does fill in so we don't have to type it a second time. The reason it works here is because I just fixed it. Well, I fixed it a couple weeks ago. But when I was fixing it, I wasn't really being very careful. And I changed something probably in the add person dialog class so that it no longer fills in anywhere else. Because this add person dialog pops up all the time whenever you try to add a new person from various different places. Here, for example, you go Jill Morris here. okay it doesn't fill in so we're going to start out with this one this is probably in main.py but here we are in search this is the function that is imported from persons.py that instantiates the add person dialog so let's find out how we're dealing with that here in search.py which is our model because this is where it does work let me tell you what in which and in which two are this is in which one Input widget, in other words. 
You go okay. Jill Moore should fill in. Does this fill in? Yes. It does. It fills in here. Now, this would be in widget 1. This would be in widget 2. And person search dialog is the only place where in widget 2 is used. The reason for in widget 2, it functions here to add the name here. But there is no other case where the add person dialog comes from an intermediary dialog like this with an in which to. Now let's open main.py from persons. This is what we're looking for. In which is self.current person input got equals got. Now got is self.current person input dot get. I shouldn't have to pass this. I should just be passing this and using the get method of tkinter to find out what's in it. And that was probably my thinking when I rewrote something over in here that broke something over in here. Open new person dialog is in persons.py. Got, you see, is no longer being used. But I need to look at every place where this is called because we can go in which dot get parentheses to find out what that is and probably do it here not here. This method its only purpose is to instantiate the person add dialog to open it up create it. Since we're not passing got nor are we using got obviously we've got a reference to the widget we should just be able to get what's in it like this. Now it's being called self dot xfer which means transfer instead of got. And here we're inserting it. So let's print self.xfer. Find out why it's not being inserted. This is the input where it's supposed to be inserted. Name input right there. Okay. So we're going to print self.xfer. Why is that not being inserted? This appears to be redundant. Got is reference on 894. There. Oh, <laughs> if you think about it, let's say you're going to put uh, Harry Carey in here. And let's say he's in the database and you tab over here and click OK. Well, if he's in the database, then yeah, you do want to blank that out. And you're going to put him up here and redraw all this stuff to be in reference to Harry Carey, the new current person. But when you're going over here and the person doesn't exist yet, I believe what we're doing is we're blanking this out too early or at an inappropriate time when it shouldn't be blanked out. So let's look at where we blank this out. Over in main, probably. There's your got. See, there might have been a reason for this. And this might have been a solution at one time. Just kind of a convoluted situation that I probably didn't deal with properly. One thing I could do is I could put this back. It wouldn't be hard to do because I can just go like this. And like this. And like this. Sometimes meddling with code is not a good idea. You want to fix it like it is. In other words, you got a problem. The solution is not to redesign the code. Solve the problem. Then if you don't like the code, redesign code that works. Fix code that's broken. Fix it first. Then if you still don't like it, or if you're not tired yet, then redesign it. Just a suggestion. Then the other part of that is to go up here and put got back. You don't have to use it because it's got a default value of none. My situation here is when I fixed this procedure over here in search.py, I think I deleted a line of code from here that was using got to do something. 
I probably was passing it to the class and it was probably in here. So let's go look at person add class in some very old, that's only like, you know, two, three months old should be old enough backups. Okay, that was a good guess. This is an old version of persons.py from May, which I locked so that I don't actually change, accidentally change the wrong one. Read only. Got was being passed to person add, just a plain old parameter. And then in person add, it was doing this. So let's see what this looks like here. What we're trying to do is undo some damage without making a lot of changes and stuff. When I fixed search.py, I wasn't thinking. I did fix search.py, but I broke everything else. What I want to do is put all this back the way it was. And that might be enough, except for putting that parameter back in. And there you go. Where else is this going to be used? For example, in here, if you make a new person, <clears throat> that fills in now. Where else is there a new person? Where else can you create a new person? That might be enough for now. Basically, no changes were made all over the place, which is good. We weren't trying to do any redesigning. Just fixing a problem, a mistake. Make sure search still works. This is where we have inwidge1 and inwidge2. This one works. This one works. Now we want to see if it continues on to in which two it works. Everything's hunky dory. Well, I'm done for today. I'm going to make another movie tomorrow and we're going to create a whole new feature in which we're going to add a restore button so that the sample tree can be restored to its original condition. So we'll have to think about what original condition is and what that means and how to define it and how to return to it. I don't know how involved that's going to be. So I'll see you again tomorrow in the next movie. Thanks for showing up. Bye-bye.